everybody, it's Dr. Joe and running Callie. She's taking a break right now because she's got runner's knee. And so we're going to show you some stretches and exercises for runner's knee, or sometimes it's called patellofemoral pain syndrome, or even chondromalacia. So we're going to start off with some stretches standing, then we'll get down on the ground and do some exercises, and then we'll jump back up and do some standing exercises at the end. So let's get started. Disclaimer alert, disclaimer alert. First stretch is going to be a hamstring stretch. You can stretch your hamstrings in a whole bunch of different ways, but I like to do some standing up ones, especially if you're getting ready to stretch before doing some exercises or something. You can use a chair, you can use a stool, or if you don't have anything, you can just prop your heel out in front of you. But the most important thing is keep your back straight. When you're bending forward, you want to bend at your hips. So if I have a chair that I'm going to prop up and stretch on, Make sure you have enough balance so you don't fall over, but if you need something to hold on to, make sure it's close by. If you don't have a whole lot of balance, again, you might want to just do the one here. But this is going to get you a little bit more stretch without having to bend as much. Keep your back nice and straight, keep your hips forward, and bend at your hips. So if I'm here holding this stretch, I get more of a stretch in my hamstrings right here than if I curl my back and come down. I'm just getting the same stretch. Because those hamstrings a hit, a, attach back here, by moving those hips forward, you get even more of a stretch. So you wanna hold this stretch for about 30 seconds. If you pull your toes up towards you, that'll kinda of get those calf muscles as well, and then you can get extra stretch all the way through your leg. But again, try and keep that back fairly straight. You can put your hands on your thigh or your quad. Just make sure you're not pushing down hard just for a little bit of balance. Come back up, shake it out a little bit. Even if you just have one side that's injured, I usually say stretch both sides because you want to keep them even. The other side probably has some overcompensation going on, so it's probably overused more than it should be, so it probably needs some stretching as well. So I like to alternate back and forth to give each side a, a break, but if not, just take about a 10 second break come back up and stretch again. So you do 30 seconds three times on each side. The next one is going to be a quad stretch for the front. You can again do this standing, you can do it lying down on your stomach or on your side. The big thing about the quad stretch is the top part of your thigh, you want to keep it straight down. Some people will take their leg and stretch like this. This really isn't stretching your quad or your thigh. You have to keep that leg downwards to get that stretch. Because it attaches up here, if it's bent, it's not really getting a stretch. And if you kick it back just a little bit, you'll get even more of a stretch. But again, try and keep your upper body straight because if I do this, again, I, I've got a little bend here, so I'm not really stretching it out. So keep your upper body nice and upright, grab that heel and pull back towards you. Again, holding for 30 seconds, switch sides, doing both sides, three on each side. Now, some people have said, well, I'm not flexible enough to grab my ankle. That's okay. If you're not, take a little belt, put it around your ankle and pull it up that way. Or use the chair to get your foot there and then you can come down and stretch that way. A little bit so there's some ways you can compensate and I have a quad stretching video if you want to check that one out as well so again 30 seconds three times on each side the next stretch is gonna be for the IT band this is really really big in runner's knee those, those IT bands on the side tend to have lots of problems for her runners because they get really tight and they start up here and they come all the way down and cross the knee so that can cause hip problems they can cause knee problems but they can cause just a lot of problems in general. And a lot of times if it's tight, it'll pull that kneecap over, giving you that runner's knee kind of pain, and then that kneecap isn't tracking properly. So a great way to stretch the IT band standing up, again, you can do this one lying down as well. Take the side you want to stretch. I'm going to start on this side because you want something to hold on to, a nice sturdy chair. You can do it against the wall but you want the side you want to stretch to be closest to the wall or the chair. Put the foot behind you, behind the other foot, crossing it over, and then take that hip 
and push it over towards the wall or the chair. So you should feel a stretch right through there. Some people don't feel a big stretch like this. So you can change the way you place your foot, which will help stretch a little bit more. Some people get more of a stretch if they go back a little bit more. And some people get more of a stretch if they come over a little bit more. So this might be a lot if you're really tight and you haven't stretched in a while. Just make sure your knee's not going straight over, you know, over your toes that you're kind of going down so you're not irritating something else while you stretch. So again, taking that foot, crossing it, pushing over, holding for 30 seconds, doing that three times. You can switch back and forth to give each side a break. So let's go down on the floor and do some exercises now. Oh, okay. So now let's do our exercises lying down. Go ahead and roll onto your side with the side that you want to exercise up on top. For this one, you want to straighten out your leg. You want to keep your hips perpendicular to the floor. So not rolled forward, not rolled back. Really concentrate on keeping them up and down. Pull your toes up towards you and point your toes downwards. So when you lift up, you're gonna lead with your heel and you're gonna go slightly backwards because you want this to be in a straight line. So you're not coming up this way, which is what people tend to wanna do. You're gonna come up and back. So lots of things to remember. Hips perpendicular, heel leading, going back, keeping that leg as straight as you can. So nice and controlled, coming up, and slowly back down. You can start off again with just 10 or 15 of these. Make sure you're relaxing your head so you're not stressing your neck. And then working your way, if you get to 20, 25, and that's easy, then you can add a small ankle weight to your foot. But again, make sure perpendicular, heel up and back. Make sure you're doing both sides again. After you do that, you're gonna pull both knees up and just place one on top of each other. Put your feet together as well, and then you're gonna do a clamshell motion. Same thing with the clamshells. You want those hips to be perpendicular to the floor. Lots of times with this one, people wanna roll their hips back when they come up, but then you're not working those muscles, you're just using that roll to bring the knee up. So keeping it straight here, and just lifting that top knee, but keep your feet together. So you're just opening up like a clamshell. It doesn't have to be high. People tend to want to go high, but then again, they roll their hips. So keeping those hips there and just lifting that knee up off the other one. Again, just starting off with 10 to 15. If 20 to 25 become really easy, you can put a band around your thighs, or you can just put a little ankle weight around the top thigh and then do those with some weights. After you do those, then you're going to roll onto your back Put your leg straight out, keep that leg locked out, keep that knee as straight as you can, pull your toes up. I like to have the other side bent just because it takes some pressure off of your low back. Some people keep it straight, that's fine. And then just lift it up about even to the other side. So you don't want to kick that leg up high, you just want to keep it about there and then slowly come back down. So same thing, just working 10, 15, once they get really easy, when you get higher, then you can put a little ankle weight uh, around your ankle and then go from there. And then the last one lying down is then rolling over onto your stomach. So the big one here is, again, keeping your leg straight and not rolling your hip when you come up with that leg. So pull your toes up, keep everything locked out. If the knee bends a little bit, that's okay, but you want to try and keep it straight and you don't have to kick high. So it's just a little kick right there and then slowly coming back down. Because if you try and kick high, people tend to roll with their hip. So again, just a little kick and then nice and slow coming back down. So same thing with those, starting off with 10 to 15. They get super easy, then you can add some ankle weights. All right, so now let's stand up. So these final exercises standing up are a little bit harder. So you might not want to do these the first couple of times. You might want to master the ones that are down on the ground or on the floor um, that are a little more doable when you're having a lot of pain. This is after you've really gotten rid of that pain, you're really starting to get that strengthening back. So the next one is going to be squats 
with a ball squeeze. And what the ball squeeze does is it helps activate that VMO, that inner quad, inner thigh muscle. And that has a lot to do with the tracking of that kneecap or patella as well, because this is the one that pulls it back into place. So if it's weak or not working properly, then that kneecap or that patella tends to go over to the side and not track properly. And sometimes you'll feel popping and clicking or grinding, and that's just because it's not going smoothly up and down. That muscle's weak, and so it's going over to the side. So take a ball. Um, it doesn't have to be a basketball. It can be anything just so you have something in between your knees and you're squeezing in. The key is to do the squeeze the whole time. So if you feel like the ball is dropping, you're probably really not squeezing that much. With a squat, if you need to hold on to something, make sure you've got a chair or something sturdy to hold on to. If your balance is a little off, make sure and put the chair behind you so if you start to squat and you can't get back up, you can just sit down in a chair. Squeezing in, making sure that those muscles are engaged, and then sticking your booty back as you go down so your knees aren't going in front of your toes. So it's not this motion, those knees going way in front of my toes, it's going back and squeezing at the same time. Try and keep your back straight, get those hips back, bring the chest forward just a little bit to keep you balanced, and try and keep your weight equal on your feet. So not all the way back on the heels, not all the way on your toes. Heels should never come up, toes should never come up. Squeezing down and coming back up. So probably just starting off with five or 10 of these, depending on how tired you get or if you're still having a little bit of pain. The last exercise is gonna be with steps. For this last exercise, make sure you don't have a big step until you're ready to work on that. So if you need to just have like a curb or something that's only two inches or so, start off with that and then you can start working your way higher. Also, if you have some steps at home, that's really nice because there's usually a rail that you can hold on to for balance. Because again, you want to have correct technique. So if you have to hold on a little bit to have the good technique, that's fine. This is gonna be a side step up. With the side step ups, you want to make sure you're coming down and back just a little bit when you step back down. For me, I like to tell people just to leave the foot up on the step. So if I want to work my left leg, my left foot stays up on that step the whole time. You don't have to come back up and down if you don't want to. But the key is to go controlled and slow. If you go slow, that makes those muscles work. So I always tell people do a count of three going up and do a count of three going down. So it's gonna be one, two, three, and then watch my foot coming down. It's going down and back, one, two, three. And the reason I like to do that is because sometimes if you come straight down, see how that knee goes way in front of those toes. And again, you don't want that because that puts a lot of pressure on the knee. So if you step back just a little bit, that takes that pressure off the knee. So again, back down, one, two, three, up, one, two, three, down. One, two, three. So if you're just coming up and coming back down, you're just using momentum and you're not really using those muscles. If you get to that and you can master that and do 15 or 20, no problems, no wiggling. If you have steps that have two like this, then you can come up to the other one. So you're getting more of a wider step and you're having to go higher as well. So same thing one two three and if you need to touch a little bit for balance that's fine and then down one two three so again you might want to start off with just a little bit of those and work your way up from there so there you have it those were your stretches and exercises for runner's knee you feel better now if you have any questions leave them in the comment section don't forget to support us on patreon clicking here and don't forget to subscribe to our channel by clicking down here and remember be safe have fun, and I hope you feel better soon.